Let's dig deeper into each of the four modalities in a blended learning arc. The first is the group discussion, and this is where you launch your learners into the work sprint ahead. One purpose of a group discussion is to connect your community. You could ask a question like, Think of someone from your past or present who has been a helper to you. And then as everyone goes around and shares that, it's a simple way to connect your community. They learn a little bit about each other's culture and they just connect so that they know each other's names and a little bit about each other. A second purpose could be to equip your students for the work sprint ahead. So you could ask a question like, which habit would best help you be productive for the independent work that follows? Is it to eliminate distractions by putting away your phone and turning off the TV? Or is it to get out a composition book and take notes and work your problems in the composition book? If you had to choose one of those two habits, which would you choose? And that's a way to help your students to start developing a mindset that will equip them for the independent work that follows. A third purpose is to inspire your students to excellence. So you hold up a masterwork from one of the great master creators in this world and then say, which of the six traits of an excellent writer does this masterpiece exemplify? Again, a way to launch them into whatever that follows. Perhaps you have a writer's workshop that, that follows. Recommendations. Co-create discussion norms ahead of time so your students are really clear on which behaviors they want to bring into the discussion to make it successful. Ask A, B questions. Those tend to be high energy and allow students to take a stand and articulate their point of view. And then manage the energy flow. Your job is not to deliver direct instruction during a group discussion. It's to manage the discussion and to help it be a rich, engaging experience. The second modality to be aware of is independent work. And when I say that, I'm really talking about the online learning part of a blended learning arc. This is where you equip your learners with online content that they can do on their own independently. That empowers them to experience progress each day and it also gives them power over the time, place, path, and pace of their learning. Many teachers find, and most teachers find, that when they have brought some online learning into their classroom, even if it's the traditional face-to-face -face classroom, they never want to return to an environment that doesn't have some of that modality in it anymore. Recommendations. Choose between a teacher-directed instructional model and a software-directed instructional model. In a teacher-directed instructional model, you post the content yourself, maybe in Google Classroom or in a learning management system. So you identify the learning objectives, you provide the videos and the content and the assignments. In a software-directed instructional model, you're relying on third-party software or e-courses or district virtual classes for the software and the content. And then you help establish minimum pacing guidelines, but you're not actually being a course builder if that's not your thing. The third modality is collaborative work. And the reason there's a yin yang symbol on this is because classrooms that embrace online learning for the independent work often find that they want to balance that out with collaborative work. There's just a natural symmetry to that. And your learners will thrive and you'll find that this will be one of the favorite modalities as you get really good at constructing and delivering collaborative projects and games. You can rely on third party uh, websites for ideas for collaborative work initially, because it takes some art to figure out how to build a good project-based learning module. So look online, you might find something that you can just plug in until you get a feel for how to design these. Co-create norms ahead of time so that your learners come into the collaborative work sprint with those norms in mind, and then be the game maker. So it's really transparent. How do you win? What are the rules? And how do you play? And then the fourth modality is the one-on-one -on -one check in. And this is where the magic happens. This is where you have the opportunity to meet with each of your learners and help them on an individual basis. As the teacher in the right in the picture here on the right, Mary Elise is doing with her student to help him give him feedback on a work product at achievement first. You could also use the time to discuss a habit, revisit a norm, discuss the student's individual goals, or really any other reason. So this is the, one of the most important parts of your blended learning arc and the part where uh, you'll probably see the most transformation for you and for your students. Those are the four modalities of a blended learning arc. I hope that that has um, given you a little bit more depth into what we're talking about when we're saying that you can transform your classroom into this new sequence and flow to help build a really rich learning experience for your learners, whether they're remote or face-to-face.